Welcome to The Ref Show. Alan Briggs taking a well-earned break over the next few weeks. I'll be standing in and still lots to get into today with our panel. Uh, David Hurst and Roger Dilks are with us. And Roger, one of the things we're going to be talking about today um, is retrospective punishment for diving. It's something that Keith Hackett's going to be talking about in his blog on the You Are The Ref website this week. Uh, it's a, a policy that I think the Premier League announced in May. What are your thoughts on the impact it's going to have? Yes, um, I think it's fair to say that we've been uh, advocating uh, retrospective punishment for diving for some time. So it's pleasing to note that the uh, Football Association uh, are bringing that in for this season um, across senior football. Uh, David, having talked to Keith about this, this subject in the past, he feels that it will really help referees because in many ways the players have mastered the art of diving. The game's got so fast players are better at deceiving the match officials. Uh, how much do you think this might help the game? Oh, it's, it's obviously going to help the game. I mean, like I've, I've said on the show many times, referees need as much help as they can these days. Mm. You know, it's not just the man in the middle like it used to be as such. We've moved forward now. You know? So the art that players have found, you know, uh, with the diving, conning referees into, into awarding free kicks, penalties, they need help to, to stamp it out, and I think this is the way forward. How difficult has it got, Roger, do you think, for the match officials? I, I suspect not just the pace of the game, but the way that the, the game has changed so much. Mm. You see a lot more diving, especially in the Premier mm. League these days, and across yeah. international football. That's right. um, how much do the referees need this extra bit of help, do yeah. you think? The, the game, Rob, has, has changed dramatically since um, I was refereeing. And as you say, it has speeded up uh, the influx of foreign players, um, I can remember recently um, David Moyes um, spoke to one of our, our academy training camps and uh, he was um, talking about um, his experiences in La Liga where players, if they just touch, they go down and that's expected and the referees just give free kicks. And um, he, he found it very, very difficult to accept that, um, that type of football. So when you bring that into um, the Premier League, then um, you know very often players are on the floor and they've not even been touched. So it becomes exceptionally difficult for referees. Um, they do the best, they're, they're exceptionally fit. Um, the reading of the game has improved. Um, but at the end of the day, if, if players are trying to deceive match officials, then they can do it. And hopefully this new um, addition to law um, which, um, which is the successful deception of a match official. That, that's the title of what we're talking about officially. Then, uh, as David said, any, any help that we can give referees will be welcome. I, I, think, I think you've got there, I mean, you mentioned like uh, La Liga and Serie A and, mm. and the likes. Having played over in them sort of games, knowing what's going to happen with free kicks, little touches, players going down, being awarded free kicks, that will still be a difficult one mm. because the governing bodies are different to a point. You know what I mean? The way the game is played. Over here, we accept a challenge. Over there, there's not so much of an acceptance. It's a free kick. So, it's, it's, again, it's, it's a difficult scenario to transfer it. That's going to be the big hard part, mm. transferring it certainly around the world. We'll probably get the benefit out of it because of our, our game is, is more of a contact sport. So we will see the, the, the situation where the contact's not being made a lot clearer. One of the things it won't solve though, Roger, is if you have a situation in a big game, a big Premier League game, uh, somebody dives, wins a penalty, yet in retrospective they may get a, a punishment of some kind, but it won't change the way that it impacted the game on the day. Not on that particular day, no. We're not there yet. Hopefully if, um, you know, looking at VAR coming down line, then that might be the deterrent on the day, and, and only time will tell about that. But in terms of where we are now, um, clearly um, it's an after the game has finished scenario. And hopefully by um, you know, the way it's been set up, um, a retired uh, ex-manager, ex-player and an ex-referee independently getting all the evidence that's available, making an independent decision and if um, those three people independently come up with the same decision, which is that the player has been um, trying to deceive the referee, then uh, they will notify the Football Association of that decision. 
and then the Football Association, um, through their uh, independent uh, regulatory commission, um, will take the appropriate action, which um, um, can be uh, a ban of two games. So hopefully if that starts to come into the game, uh, like it has been in Scotland, then that itself will act as a deterrent. David, how, how big a problem do you think diving is in English football today? I think, I think we, all, we all see the problem. Mm. Uh, it, it, it crept into the, great, into the game. Hopefully it'll creep back out. You know, But there's going to be situations where players will take the chance. This is where it's got to really work with VAR for me. Mm. You know, It's all right doing it after the event. The game's been lost. You know, so if we, if we can get it working together, you know, in conjunction with each other, then we get the right end product. Uh, if, you, if you're looking at one day and then the next day, yeah, the ban comes in. If that's the last game of the season and it keeps you up, that ban's irrelevant to you, you know, of Good what's point. happened then. You know what I mean, Roger? Yeah. No, it, it, it doesn't, point. you know, it, the cup final, the semi-final, it becomes irrelevant if he mm. gets a two-match ban. Mm. What we've got to do is get it right on the day and the punishment after the event. Because it could be a game that determines some qualification for Champions League, it could be promotion, relegation, yeah, it could yeah. even be a title deciding game. Mm. You, like I say, too much ban ultimately mm. in the great scheme of things. You'll be praised as a hero if it leads to your team actually yeah. achieving something. Well, this like is that. it, and that's not what we want. No. <laughs> we don't want the praise, the, uh, mm. the criminal, if you like. Mm. You know, so, yeah, like I say, it's got to work in conjunction with, with VAR, and uh, then, we, like I said, we get the right decision at the end of the day. Mm. Mm. Uh, Roger, do you think this is something that the the Premier League is right to focus on a, quite a main priority for, for the next season. I, I do indeed, I do indeed. I mean, there were so many examples last season and, and uh, we had lots of discussion on, on the show uh, about them. But I think it's, it's a step in the right direction. It's something that we've wanted to see for some time. Um, the FA have now brought um, um, this onto the, uh, on, onto the statutes and, and let's hope um, that... Uh, it, it does act as the deterrent that it wants it to be. It won't eradicate it completely. Dave is absolutely spot on from, from, um, from the player's perspective and the club's perspective. Um, but um, we need help. Uh, let's not kid ourselves. We need help. And this is another... Uh, Let, let's not forget, yeah. that's been in the game since the game started, mm. pretty much. Yeah. You know, it's just now that we're seeing it more and more. You know, there's going to be instances where the slightest of touches is going to go down. Mm. That's the game, unfortunately, at times. Uh, it's the blatant stuff that yes. we don't want to see, you know, whether there's been absolutely no contact in the box, he can't evade it, he goes down knowing what's coming. That's the bit that we've got to get out. When you're watching a game though, David, do you see more of it today compared to when you were playing? Without a doubt, without mm. a doubt, because, <laughs> because how difficult it is for the referees. We can't ask the referees to get any fitter, any quicker mind thoughts. You know, they're at the peak, these guys. It, we've put everything into the referees, making them professional, doing the right things. You know, the, the training camps that they do, going and watching games, studying the game. They're pretty much as far as they can go mm. as individuals. Now we've got the technology to help them out, and that's, that's what we've got to get right. So that we, we put them in a position where the, any opportunity to correct a wrong decision is given to them. Mm. Oh, yeah, it comes back to the, as you've discussed already, Roger, it comes back to the old topic that we've had on the ref show for the last few weeks which is VAR doesn't mm. it that this is a good idea but ultimately it has to go in hand in hand with this technology if we're going to talk about helping referees yeah. that is ultimately the best way to do it isn't it it is indeed and um, they'll have to um, rethink how they're going to join up the two things mm. because um, you know if a VAR decision um, creates the right uh, decision on the day then you'll get referees cautioning players for unsporting behaviour. If it's not seen and it goes to this uh, independent panel, the potential uh, uh, penalty is too mm. much ban. So uh, there's, there's bits and pieces that they'll need to think about very carefully. But if we can get VAR, um, you know, covering specific things, simple to administer, simple to understand, and let's not worry about snap decisions. Let's, let's get the right decisions on the day and we'll be happy then. And Keith, I can, I've been talking to him about it, David, believes that if it's something that if you can get right to the top level, it will filter down, that ultimately we're seeing a lot more diving in the lower leagues and also in grassroots level because they're copying the Premier League. Do you think that this could have a, well, I an think impact that further down if they get it right? I think that is the way forward for it. You know, you've got to get it right 
at the beginning where it needs to be mm. and then it will filter down like you say it, it, it's watching young kids play you know that see the players diving you go and watch park football you see them diving in the in the parks mm. they've only learned from the top so the leagues have got to learn from that one of the things we're going to be talking about in part two of the ref show this week is sim bins and i just wonder whether or not that can be something that can be used uh, to try and solve this issue with diving as well. That's coming up in part two of the rest show. Panelists today, David Hurst and Roger Dilks with us, and uh, that's coming up next. <laughs>